Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to Castlevania II Simon's Quest for the Nintendo Entertainment System here in 2023. This was one of the first Nintendo games that I ever got. I was blown away by this game when I played it at a friend's house, and it is a fundamental shift away from Castlevania, the original, in the sense that it has RPG elements and NPCs that you can talk to and interact with, uh, kind of in a way that the paradigm between Zelda and Zelda 2 shifted, but uh, this is, in my opinion, a, a fantastic upgrade from the more arcadey feel of Castlevania, and it gives you a sense of what became with the later Castlevanias, like Symphony of the Night, when they developed harder into the more RPG elements of allowing you to have equipment, upgrade, talk to people, and it's just a great game. So in this guide, what I'm going to do is start up a brand new file. I'm going to play the game and explain the controls, some tips and tricks, my thought process, and everything that I kind of reminisce about with this classic title so that you can understand how to play the game, what you want to be doing, and get some gameplay so you can see if it's a game that you might be interested in. Now, I'm playing it using the NES Mini, and for my money, it's a fantastic way to do this, but there are plenty of other ways uh, to play Nintendo games. I actually own this game in physical Nintendo form, uh, but it's just easier to capture in HDMI than, you know, blowing on the Nintendo cartridge and praying that it works uh, anymore. So here we go. I'm going to start a brand new game now. Now, this is a game that you can get passwords in so that you can resume them. Uh, your file, which is amazing, and this was something that was always such a trial when I was a child, like remembering the password, writing it down so you could read it and not losing it. And if you got something wrong and you lost all your progress, it was devastating. Um, but it was nonetheless a, a fun way to keep record. Now that I've got uh, a NES Mini, you can just have a save state. I'm not going to use that to exploit gameplay in any fashion. I just use it for a quality of life feature. So we're going to fire this up and just go game start. And you can hear the music fade out as we begin. All right. And we start the game right here in the town. Like I said, NPCs, bebop and music, rocking around. All right. So you can move around using the directional pad. Obviously, you jump with A. You swing that famous whip of Simon Belmont's with the B button. And in the upper left corner, you see I have health. Okay, so I have like a health bar that can deplete and I can refill. And it's not like one shot and you're dead. Now, if you want to um, chat with somebody, you kind of stand up top of them. And you push the B button uh, to not whip them, but speak to them. And he says, first thing to do in this town is buy a white crystal. And even this dialogue box, you know, is very evocative of Zelda 2, of course. But this is true. What this guy is saying is absolutely the case. We need to get a white crystal pronto. And that shows you that this game is much different than, uh, you know, other Castlevanias. I guess the only one was the previous one at this time, where you get money and you're going to buy stuff. You get experience. You have levels. Um, and you're going to get new equipment that's permanent. So it's fantastic. Right now, we've got nothing, you know, and we need some cash. Let's see what this dude says. A crooked trader is offering bum deals in this town. So what this means is, and we'll see, some of these doors in the background, um, you push up, you can't go in, but the church, you can go in, you go up. And up here is the 
priest, you talk and they say rest here for a while and you can restore your health here. You can also jump up here and look for secrets, see if there's any doors to break, admire the amazing hanging drapes and just move along. And we're just gonna kind of explore this awesome town. These staircases you can push down to go through uh, and we get to a dead end. No, nope. no. Nope. And we've talked to the people on this kind of tier of the town. These towns are vertically uh, kind of organized. And this is a trader, this gray robe, buy a white crystal. And it costs 50 hearts, I guess, is the currency in this. And we have that much money. So I'm going to buy it right away. So you push B to select it when you say yes. And now you can see... Um, I have nothing, okay, in terms of money anymore. I have no experience, I have no levels, and I have a light whip, but you can see I do have a white crystal, and you can move around on this inventory screen to kind of select different things if you wish uh, to use them, because there are instances where you need to use things, uh, but this is not one of them, and we'll go in here, and here's another trader, and let's see what they've got. Want to buy holy water? Okay, so you can buy holy water for 50 as well. We don't have any money left, so we say no. That's not a wicked trader. That's an okay trader. And we'll just move down here. Now, don't fall in this water. If you fall in the water, oh my god, it's bad news. What a horrible night to have a curse. Now, this is another great thing about the game. It has a night and day cycle, kind of revolutionary at the time. And when it's nighttime, most of the villagers will go inside to hide. So you won't find people walking the streets very much anymore. And when we go outside the town to the right, you're going to find much harder enemies. And even inside the town, look, there's this ghoul that's right here. Now, you do not touch this thing. You have to wait for it to go by. If you get bonked when you're on the stairs, um, it's just a bad scene. All right, so we're going to whip, whip, and you can see our whip kind of slows them down. You can pause the game, by the way, with select. All right. And they just, these dudes, or I don't know if they have genders, but they just kind of go in a straight line. You just need to give them two. Now, that money that they just gave us is four money. That, that half of a heart, that's a big piece of money. And this the rewards are also increased at night. I recommend at your first nighttime, until you have some better stuff, um, just stay in the town. You're getting experience. You see I have six experience. Okay. And that seemed to give me nothing. Oh my god. I got pushed around. You have to have enough space. So I have six experience and eight money. And then when I get this heart, I get nine experience and 12 money. So each of those half hearts is worth three experience and 12 money. It's worthwhile to note that you're actually not getting anything if they drop nothing. So that's just sad when that happens. And these enemies aren't great for dropping things, but it's certainly worth your time to grind up right here. Try to make enough money to buy the holy water, perhaps, or see what else is on sale. Pick those up, and you'll see you can't go into the church at night. Even though the doorway is open, you can't go into a lot of these places. Now, there are some towns that have traders or people that you can talk to that only appear at night, actually. So, uh, but that's typically a rare occurrence. Right now, everyone goes inside because, you know, nighttime is Dracula's time. So you don't want to be out here, although it looks nice, has cool music. Take this. Oh, and you see that? I didn't get the heart before it disappeared, and that's just unconscionable, and I feel ashamed. There we go. And you can just walk back and forth on one level, whatever you want. Just make sure you give yourself enough space to get two whip cracks in. Because with this terrible whip, that's what it takes. Look at our strut. Man, we look sweet. Do it.
All right. Take that. Oh, God. It's not going well for me. There we go. Heck yeah. We're going to make the best of this night. Now, I'm going to kind of go down here, and the morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. So you see, after a certain amount of time passes, boom, daytime. And as soon as it's daytime, townsfolk will pop out. I'm going to jump over here, talk to this dude. You have a friend in the town of Aldra. Go and see him. So they're giving you kind of directions. Now you see right here, I'll show you. Jump over this. This is like a little um, signpost. Turn right for the Jova Woods. Left for Belasco Marsh. All right, so it gives you kind of directions. So you, in classic old school style with these kind of games, you need to talk to everyone. A magic potion will destroy the wall of evil. So we need a magic potion to destroy that wall of evil. Let's talk to this jumpy dude. Rumor has it, the ferryman at Dead River loves garlic. Hmm, interesting rumor. All right, let's see. Buy a thorn whip, a hundred money. Okay, so we would love to buy a thorn whip, like an upgrade for our whip, but it costs a hundred hearts, and we don't have enough right now. So, as games were evolving at this time and RPGs were coming up, you get RPG elements and one of them is grinding. A flame is on top of the sixth tree in Dennis Woods. Alright, so we need to find Dennis Woods and look for that sixth tree indeed. Buy a white crystal? Already did. Don't buy another one. Alright, so let's go over here. And eventually it's just worth your time to explore. Now, in the daytime, okay, the enemies are the same in the day as we saw in the night, but they are harder. They have, like, more hit points. These kind of, I call them werewolves, I don't know, you know. But you see they're giving us, the, like, the lowest possible reward, only 56. But in night, they have way more hit points, so they're harder to kill, even though their rewards are better. Now, I'm going to buy um, Holy Water. See, they do this, like, wild jump thing. I could save up for the Thorn Whip, but if memory serves, okay, the Thorn Whip is a marginal upgrade. Want to buy Holy Water? Yes. Now, once we get Holy Water, okay, you can push Start, and you need to push kind of right and left until the cursor is flashing, and you have the White Crystal selected, you're using it, and you have the Holy Water selected, okay, then push Start again, and then if you hold up and push B, once you have that selected, you've got yourself Holy Water that you can throw. So I'll show you. You can throw holy water to do damage. Now, it's particularly useful uh, in a situation where you can drop down holy water on them and they can't get to you. And holy water is also very, very good for uh, destroying blocks. There are some blocks that you can break with holy water, find secrets and such. All right. Kill these dudes and we go over here and we find ourselves at a bridge, and there's evil fish monster just jumping out of the water, being nasty. Okay, let's just kind of do that. There we go. Heck yeah. Jump. Smack him. All right. Oh my god, the fireball. And look, we're dead. Now, you see how it says Game Start Player 2? You have lives, okay? Okay. So you have lives before you have to continue. Oh, God. We got to be careful. Oh, my God. They're shooting the fire. Oh, my God. Look at this. We've died. And what happens? What happens when we die is bad. 
I'll show you. So at this point, we lose, and you can just get your password if you want to stop playing, turn off your Nintendo. You can click continue, okay? And you click continue, and you start again with three lives, all right? But let me show you. We've lost all our experience and all our money. So it's really bad to die. And because of that, you want to be careful of a place like this. So this is classic old school Nintendo. You get hit, you get bumped off, you're in the water, you're dead. So you need to just play better. And now it's nighttime. So we want to get as far away from this as possible. This game is not easy. And most Nintendo games really aren't. But it's a lot of fun when you start making progress. So we're going to try to work our way back. The good thing is we don't lose our holy water. And we don't lose our white crystal. So the things that we bought, we retain. And if memory serves, if you actually gain an experience level. You see me throwing the holy water down. Oh my god. If you gain a level, I don't believe you lose that upon death. I think you just lose all the experience. Yeah, that's going to be rough. These guys take, I believe, three. No, they're four cracks. They're like double. Now, we want to get this heart before it goes away and back. Now, when we look at this, we're back to 13 experience, 18 money. That's great. But in my opinion, it's better to grind in town because it's just less risk. And so what you're going to be doing early in the game is buying everything at the first town. The kind of loop is this. You talk to every single person in the town that you can get to to get some sense of what you need to be doing. You find all of the traders and you try to get enough money to buy everything in that town. Then you're going to kind of explore moving you know, right and left from the town until you get to a place that you can't go any further or a dungeon or something like that that you need to handle. In this game, the purpose is to like reconstruct, get all of Dracula's parts back. So that you can kind of like bring him back from the his slumber to ultimately try and kill him, I believe. Now, granted, it's been decades since I've played this game last, but I remember you go around and, in true fashion, Mega Man, any game with bosses, you're going around you're killing the bosses and you're getting, like, Dracula's heart, Dracula's rib, Dracula's eye, like, different body parts of Dracula. Some of them give you powers and you can equip them. And ultimately, you gotta get, have a showdown with the big guy. Now, there are places that you can go where if you walk back and forth, you can cause these dudes to respawn really quickly within a short period. You just kind of, kind of find, like, this guy, you see how he's coming back, and I don't have to move very far. So this is, like, the most efficient way up on this top level to kind of grind up a level. You see him dropping this, and you can just go back and forth and cheese this dude out to get some cash. Okay, the morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. So the guy that we're fighting will just disappear. So he's taking damage, but he's not dead. Now he is. And we have 78 money. So I'm going to buy a Thorn Whip. Usually I skip the Thorn Whip because it is kind of a ripoff. Um, I believe you can get the whip that's better than that, the Chain Whip, uh, for 150. But at the same time... Why not? We're trying to make ourselves strong. We're trying to have some fun. And to be honest, I'm not the player I was in my youth, so I can't just rely on skipping ahead to better, you know, weapons. I beat this game many times. Like I said, it was one of my first games that I owned for the Nintendo. And loved it. Absolutely loved it.
All right, where are we at? 96? Heck yeah, we're almost there. All right. Now, you see we're taking some damage. We're getting knocked around a little bit. We have 102. We got enough to go buy that whip. I'm going to buy the whip, and I'm going to go to the church. Be careful in town. Don't fall to your death. Yes. All right. No. All right. So now you can see we have not the light whip, but the thorn whip. And it looks exactly the same. So there's that. Oh, my God. There's that. See, this is how dangerous town can be. But luckily, we don't really care. It's actually nice. We restore our health. So there's that. Now, we might want to get the next level before we actually die though and lose all of our experience we don't have to worry about money now you see this these enemies are super hard like they're shooting fireballs so this is a much more difficult path for us so the game is telling us like in no uncertain terms you know uh you should not go that way so we almost died we're at one health so you experiment you feel it out and you say you know what dear God, that direction is too hard for me. I need to go to the right, even though there's that horrible bridge. So all we gotta do at the bridge is just take our time and be careful not to get hit. I'm gonna heal up. Rest here for a while. I will. There's our health back. God, that feels good. Looking for secrets. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. Now, it's going to turn nighttime, unfortunately, as we travel. But that's the way of it. Now, you see, with our Thorn Whip, we can kill these uh, werewolf dudes in one shot. So, it it's not a huge upgrade, but it's worthwhile. Now, let's take, take a look at this, actually. Let's see, for example, if... Alright, I'm at 82 experience. We can level up. See, even in the nighttime... No, there are two shots. Okay. That must have been one that spawned during the day that hadn't had its health doubled. But it's double the strength of our previous whip. So it's definitely helpful. And it allows us to fight out here in the night. Just walk away from that guy. We have 97. Alright. Yes. So that means we leveled up. So we just hit level 1. Now, I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while. What leveling does. I think it gives you more health. Oh my god, that was bad. I'm actually going to push forward. I don't need to be near the town right now. I've leveled up. So I don't have a lot. I can I can lose 56 money, but I don't really have anything I can buy it for. And by the way, if it wasn't clear, you see how I bought the holy water for 30? Or I'm sorry, for 50? It's permanent. So you buy it once and you can throw unlimited holy water. Alright, that guy's got to foothold and he's going to shoot a really annoying fireball that does hit us so that's what you have to do uh to avoid death by those guys is really just keep pushing forward because if they get out and can shoot the fireball at you that's when the trouble begins or that or that happens okay We made it. Oh my god, yes. And 
Now check this out. You see how that dude is walking through the bricks? That's an indication that this is a secret and you can break it with your holy water. You can't break it with your whip. You can break it with your holy water. But to be honest, it's not a great secret. They're just kind of revealing the mechanic for you. But um, going down here to these like kind of lava waters, it ain't a good idea. That being said, I'm going to show you anyway. Because what if there is something down here? What if... Alright, nothing that I can see. Oop. But let's just check the floor anyway. You never know if there actually is some kind of other secret. So what I like to do is just sprinkle the ground with the holy water and... Yep, nothing there. It just lets you avoid going up top, but honestly, it's more difficult than this, so. All right, we're going to keep on going. Break this, dude. Now we can go down the steps. Oh, mercifully, the morning sun is here. Thank God. We needed that. We needed a little pick-me-up. Break that. Break him. All right, let's see what's down here. We go down the steps. Got some blue grass. Jumping down. What do we got? Yes! A rib can shield you from evil. And this is right. If you get Dracula's rib out of the, the castle or dungeon, you can use it as a shield. It's fantastic. Alright, so let's just jump. And what's in here? Oh, it looks empty. Oh my goodness. Secret. This is why you want to ha buy everything from the first town, because Holy Water is your buddy for revealing secrets. And who's this? Will you buy a dagger? So you can buy the dagger for 50? I don't know if I have 50. How much money do I have? I have enough, actually. I could buy this. Um, so I am going to buy it. Will you buy a dagger? Yes. So that dagger bender was hidden. The dagger works like you would expect. In Castlevania games, it just... You throw it right up in front of you. It does not have unlimited reach. And it, you can't really throw it very fast. But it's nice be because uh, it goes a little further forward for you. Turn right for Dabby's Path. Left for the Veros Woods. Alright. Laurels in your soup enhances its aroma right you look pale my son you must rest in the church okay clues to dracula's riddle are in the town of alba okay no no what about this lady no she said that what about you oh my god oh in Berkeley Mansion. Okay. Alright. Let's see what is going on here. Rest here for a while. Indeed. Now, what I always like to do here is go ahead and just get my holy water out. See if there's any secrets. You never know. Alright, you're clean. No, I don't need to really rest. But I appreciate it. Oh my god. That, thank you. I've been here for... For weeks, apparently, resting. Alright. And... Let's see. So we bought the dagger, and what do you sell? Hmm. Oh! Look at this. They're down here. And we go over here. And what you got, trader? purchase a chain whip so the chain whip is 150 and it's phenomenal and we want it so badly but uh you can see how close it is so if you can just get through that bridge and save up 150 you can easily just skip the thorn whip once you become advanced at the game but um i'm not and there's an eyeball and the eyeball is scary Now, if I fall in this... Okay, check this out. 
I don't die instantly, but it starts to do damage to you. And, like, you'll just kind of take damage until you get out. It burns or something. I don't know. So we're going to go up here. Oh, my God. The eyeball. We lost the heart. So rude. All right. We got 60 cash. Now, I'm not going to... I know that it's going to be nighttime soon. So I'm... We got to take care of the eyeball. It's going to knock us in. I'm not going to head too far away from town. So we made it to the second town. We got everything from the first town. We bought the dagger from the second town. And we found that our next objective, which is a fantastic chain whip. And I think this is a good place to stop this first episode of our beginner's guide to Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. I hope at this point you understand the controls. You understand the strategy, how to deal with night and day, buying everything, exploring the difficulty of the game how to get around and let's see anything over here you never know no so if you have any questions about the game please pose those in the comments below and check this game out get it in whatever iteration you can because it's really worth your time it's a fantastic game thanks for watching take care